It's been a couple of years now since I made my videos explaining GLP-1 medications such as Ozempic and Runjaro. And since then, these medications have gone on to become huge in the weight loss space. I think the last time I checked, about 20 million people around the world are using some sort of GLP-1. Now these medications are available mostly in injectable forms like this pen and at the moment that means you have to give yourself an injection usually once a week. And so I think naturally the next frontier for these medications is to somehow get them into a tablet form like this, which I think would just explode their use. And well, the people that make GLP ones are thinking the same thing. So currently there is only one tablet form of GLP ones available, and that is Ribelsis, which I have made a video about in the past, but there is one more in the pipeline that is really getting my attention and it's going through some trials at the moment, which means it's not available yet. Uh, but this one is called Orphoglipron. Just park that in the back of your mind um, because I think we'll be hearing a bit more about that in the next year especially. But what I actually wanted to do today was talk about the differences between the injectable and tablet versions of GLP-1s, mainly in terms of their effectiveness and also I want to go through what we are seeing in the research because at first glance it does seem like a no-brainer to pick the injection over the tablet because it is so much easier to take and also likely going to be much cheaper because it's easier to make tablets than injections. But I just want to know if it really is that simple, are the tablets going to be better? So let's try to find out. <laughs> Quick recap of how these medications work because this is important to know if we want to understand why making them into a tablet form is a bit difficult. So GLP-1, that stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, and this is actually a natural hormone that your body already produces, mainly in your gut, in response to you eating foods. And it does a few things, but I think I like to bring it down to three main actions. The first is that it sends messages to your pancreas and it tells it to increase the amount of insulin that it releases. Now what this does is allows glucose to move from the blood into your cells. And this is important because it keeps blood sugar levels low and this is actually the main reason that these medicines were first used for type 2 diabetes. But that isn't all that they do. They also slow down the rate of stomach emptying and this means that you'll feel fuller for longer. And the third thing is that it sends messages to the brain also signaling that you are feeling fuller for longer. And so these two things here, the stomach emptying and the brain signals, are why these medications are helping with weight loss in particular. Now the GLP-1 medications that we are seeing at the moment, so for example Ozempic, Wegovi and Munjaro, they are synthetic versions of this GLP-1 hormone, which is why they are called GLP-1 analogs. They are designed to work in the same way as the natural hormone. And part of that is because in people with type 2 diabetes or even obesity, there may be less of this hormone being made or it may not be working as effectively. And so these synthetic versions, they're also designed to last much longer in your body because the natural GLP-1, it only actually lasts a few minutes before being broken down by your body. And this is actually part of the reason that making a GLP-1 into a tablet is so difficult. When you take a tablet, it needs to go through your digestive system, which includes, of course, your stomach and your intestines. Now, GLP-1 molecules are essentially just large proteins, which the digestive system, especially the stomach, is very good at breaking down. The stomach acid in particular is very good at breaking down proteins. And so this is why your naturally made GLP-1 gets broken down very quickly. And so these synthetic versions are still going to be proteins and they are still going to get attacked by your stomach. Meaning it won't last long at all for your body to use. And this is why the popular GLP-1 medications, they are all injections because this is the best way to get the full dose into your body without it all being broken down by your digestive system. The injectable forms, they bypass your digestive system, so they don't need to go through your stomach or your intestines. That's because you're injecting them just under 
um, one of the layers of the skin so it gets absorbed through that instead. So that's the big problem. How do we take something that is normally destroyed by the digestive system and turn it into a tablet that can actually work? Well, the first attempt at this was the tablet version of semaglutide, which is known as ribelsis. And what they did with ribelsis was add in a special ingredient called SNAC, which all you need to know right now is that this ingredient gets added to the tablet so that when it comes into contact with the stomach acid, it will reduce the acidity of the stomach acid, which actually ends up protecting the actual GLP-1 that's in the medication or in the tablet. In this case, it is semaglutide, so it prevents it from being broken down by the stomach acid. And by protecting the actual GLP-1 medication, it means that that can move through the stomach lining and get absorbed into your body. Now I did explain this in a bit more detail in my ribelsis video, so you can check that out if you're curious. But this sounds like we have solved the problem, right? But ribelsis needs to be taken on an empty stomach 30 minutes before eating, otherwise the amount of medication getting absorbed will drastically reduce. And even then, only a tiny amount of the actual medication in this tablet will get properly absorbed. We're talking about around 1%, so that's really not that good. Injections are still able to allow so much more of the dose to get absorbed by your body. Now, ribelsis was first, but there are actually new tablet versions of GLP-1s coming along. And one that I do have my eye on is called Orphoglipron which is being developed by the same company that makes Munjaro. Now this is currently going through trials and I don't think we'll see it available until at least next year, but this medication is quite different. It's not a protein. They have somehow made it in a different chemical form, which means it is stable in stomach acid. And that means it should survive in your digestive system and technically get absorbed a bit better. Now, I will do a bit of digging on what research is available and make a video specifically about this medication soon. But right now, I want to move on to actually comparing the effectiveness between the injections and the tablets with your GLP-1s. So I have scoured a bit of the research out there and I will put the links to these studies in the description. But at this stage, the injectable forms of the GLP-1s still have the lead when it comes to effectiveness, especially with weight loss. So semaglutide, which is Wegovi or Ozempic, has seen an average weight loss of about 15% in people that are overweight or obese. Now these results were seen over a time period of 68 weeks, which is a little over a year. Now tazepatide, which is the medication in Munjaro, is actually considered a bit more effective because some studies are seeing the average weight loss of the people in them being between 16 to 22 percent. So that's better than a Wigovi and Ozempic. Now these were in a 72 week time frame, so about a year and a half. And so those are the numbers that we are currently seeing with the injectable GLP ones. And they are strong numbers, which is why they are so popular, even though people will need to inject themselves. Those results are obviously worth it to those that are using these. So how then do the tablets square up against this? Well, like I said, it's not quite there yet. Ribelsis isn't even being used for weight loss at the moment. It's only approved for type 2 diabetes at the moment. But studies have seen weight loss between 5 to 7% over a 28 to 78 week period. Now, there are some ongoing trials that are investigating higher doses of ribelsis, so between 25 to 50 milligrams, which is more than double the standard. And these higher doses are with the aim of weight loss. And so I believe the studies using these higher doses, they are finding better results with weight loss, but higher doses means more chances of experiencing side effects. So we will see how those go. And of course, I will try and keep you updated. But as you can see, there's much less weight loss compared to the injectable GLP ones. And I think these results just show how much of a problem it is to get that GLP one absorbed through the digestive system. If it's not going to be absorbed, it's not going to work as well. So if we can't overcome that challenge, the tablets are always going to be less effective. Now, the newcomer, Orphoglipron, is seeing more impressive results and numbers at the moment compared to ribelsis. So current studies that are over about a 72 week period are seeing average weight loss at the 11% mark. 
So that means that the gap between tablets and injections may be closing ever so slowly as they really work on getting the technology to work better. But this is such a new space, there's developments happening continuously. So really that's it for now. The injectable versions of GLP-1s are still the best for weight loss, but they may not get to have such a big lead for long because the tablets are slowly catching up. If you're using a GLP-1, please share your experience in the comments. And if you have any questions about them, then ask away as well. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, keep playing the long game.